ChatGPT can now browse the web and take action in other applications using plugins. This is as big a development as ChatGPT itself. So don't miss out on learning how to use this powerful new capability, which is going to unlock a whole new world of possibility. First things first. How to access it? Well, you need to be a Plus subscriber. And if you are, you'll be able to go onto your ChatGPT account, come down to the bottom section, click on the three dots and go to settings. From here, you can come to the second tab, which is beta features and toggle both of these on, which are web browsing and plugins. Now, when you come to a new chat, you can go to ChatGPT4 and select from the drop down menu to use web browsing or plugins. So now you can ask ChatGPT to do wonderful things in browsing the web. For instance, I've asked it to give me a report on the latest developments in the field of AI in the last 48 hours. Then take these and format them into a short summary that is a script suitable for a YouTube video. And here we have it. It's telling me to play some cheerful music. Da, 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 da. Host on screen, that's me. Hello and welcome back to our AI news channel. We have a lot to catch up on in the world of AI. So let's jump straight in to the latest happenings of the last 48 hours. First off, Stability AI, the startup behind the text to image model Stable Diffusion, announced the release of Stable Studio, an open source version of its AI powered design suite. Now you will also get links that you can click on to check the validity of this. So I will open all three of these, which are the green little numbers above your text and take a look at what we get. You can see that this is correct. And this article was also posted yesterday. And it seems like a fairly interesting topic for me to cover, though it has linked to the same article three times in its sources, which is a little bit strange. But if you want to go in depth into seeing how it came to this, you can come up to the drop down menu at the top of the message. From here, you can see the entire thought process that ChatGPT has gone through whilst coming up with your answer. And you can see here what it has done is search for latest AI development news, which is interesting because it has managed to pass my query into a search term that is not exactly what I asked it for, but still correlates with the same meaning. So I asked for the latest developments in the field of AI and it put in latest AI development news and then clicked on techcrunch.com. So if I put that in myself and see what I come up with, you can see that it does not present me with the same article that was selected by ChatGPT. So if you were doing this yourself, you would actually get a separate series of results. But if I was to toggle the date range and put this into the last 24 hours, I still don't get the same solution. So it's very interesting that ChatGPT will actually take a different approach than you might do yourself. You can then see what it goes on to do. You can see it went back and tried a different article. It went to this one from the Wall Street Journal, also this one from Interesting Engineering. And it took all of these and it passed it into a script for me. So let's return to the script and see what else it came up with. You can see that it's come on to a second topic from another article about OpenAI releasing an open source model. So you can see that it's been able to go onto a number of different websites, pass out the most interesting stories and put those into a coherent script that I could use to create a video straight away. This immensely saves time and resources because I may well have to do that myself or ask someone to do it for me. So another thing that I've done is I've asked it to please check the best flight options from Sofia to the Netherlands for a five day trip in June. And you can see that it's come out with some reasonable answers for my trip. And you can click on the links for these and it only takes you to the Skyscanner search page. It doesn't actually list the real flights. But there is a plugin from Kayak that gives you more options to do a task like this. It's also given me some other information about the approximate journey time and the number of flights that there are, are a week. Now, I then wanted to give it a little bit more specific information to see if it would go further. And I said that I'm leaving from Sofia going to Holland. I want zero stops and to go for a total of five days. And when I did this, it got stuck in an endless loop of browsing the web. I don't know what it's doing, but I tried it a couple of times and it gave up on me. So damn you machine. What browsing does is it allows ChatGPT to surpass its limitations of only having knowledge up until September 2021. And this gives us so much more potential to make ChatGPT to relevant events that are happening right now. So if you want a detailed daily summary of the latest news, if you want ChatGPT to pass out trends in your industry, now it can. ChatGPT also now has the ability to fact check its own work. So you can ask it to go into the web and look 
for sources to validate the things that it said. One of the issues that has been cropping up with ChatGPT is that it will hallucinate and falsify information, facts and quotes from other people. But now we have the ability to help ChatGPT fact check itself. Some of the more interesting uses that you can now take advantage of ChatGPT for are to ask it, for example, about events that are happening in your local area tailored to your taste. You could also ask it to help with job searching and looking at different job boards and passing out suitable job opportunities that you might want to take advantage of, as well as suggesting tailored cover letters to apply for those jobs. The ability to get personalized daily summaries for things that interest you. There will be more than 70 plugins at launch, including Instacart, Expedia, Klarna, OpenTable, and many more, taking the possibilities for what we can do inside of ChatGPT a whole lot further, allowing it to incorporate real-time data and not be shackled by its previous limitation of only having up-to-date information until the end of 2021. There are a number of official ChatGPT plugins released by OpenAI, including browsing, that allows the system to browse the internet. Code Interpreter, which is an experimental model that can use Python, handle uploads and downloads, so you can program iteratively inside of ChatGPT. There is also Retrieval, which is an open source retrieval plugin that enables ChatGPT to access personal or organizational information with permission. This allows it to draw in data from other sources. So essentially, if you have a vast amount of your own data, which you want to be using inside of ChatGPT, that is now possible. Some of the other plugins that will be available immediately on release include Instacart, allowing you to order your favorite local groceries. So you can be like, Chat GBT, I want a sandwich with mayonnaise and apple. You'll be able to shop directly from inside ChatGPT and Fiscal Note provides and enables access to select market-leading real-time data sets for legal, political and regulatory data and information. This will hopefully challenge the problem with ChatGPT hallucinating and inventing facts where it is now much more able to check its own data against truth. Zapier is one of the most exciting integrations because this will allow you to automate and integrate actions across many different platforms. Everything from Google Sheets to Trello to Gmail to HubSpot, Salesforce and more. So you can automate your procedures in spreadsheets and also your emailing. I'm particularly interested to try out Speak, which is a language tutor which allows you to understand anything in a new language. Since this TED talk one month ago about the plugin features on ChatGPT, I've been itching to get my hands on these new features. And now we've unlocked a whole host of new capabilities for humans to use. And it's going to massively increase our productivity, our creativity and our potential. And there are going to be such a range of creative possibility now available to everyone. So a couple of limitations I want to mention about using ChatGPT plugins and web browsing is that often there will be this error which is click failed when you're using the web browsing function. And this essentially leaves you in a loop where ChatGPT will not complete its task. It will try to go back and see another page, but often it will give up. Another issue is that you can only use three plugins at a time. I would personally like the option to put our chats into different folders and navigate them in an experience similar to browsing your files on your desktop. But this is a huge step forward and completely changes the landscape of using ChatGPT. What will you use ChatGPT plugins and web browsing for? Make sure to watch this video next for more on the latest in AI.